Hello, welcome back to the channel. I had a question in a comment on another video asking me for a good high DPS beginner friendly build. Right, it's, I'll, I'll do this one for you. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's a purifier. Now, the, the question about what's a good what's a good starter build, any build really, apart from a few um, weird combinations that only really become fun massively late game when you've got decent equipment. Now, Purifier will go in. I'm not going to edit this. I'll, I'll, cut, I'll cut the cutscene out. This is a this is a fresh start, so there's nothing in stash. This is what it would be like if you just installed the game, and you'd never owned it before. Thing about thing about purifier is you haven't got to worry about damage conversion. You're going to be um, viable from right from the start. You can wield two guns as soon as you hit level two. Yes, this is true. It's this is the only. The only mastery where you can do that is Inquisitor. Now, if you watch other videos about leveling a purifier, they'll say, do demolitionist first and pump a load of points into fire strike. Totally correct, absolutely spot on. However, if you want the, the fun of having two pistols straight away within minutes of starting the game, and this I'm not lying, I mean, I'll show you. There's a few things I'm going to do that's a bit of a cheat. I mean, you, can, you can pick that law note up straight away and read it to, to almost hit level 2. I'll kill these guys and I'll be level 2 before you can say what are you talking about, John? So yes, the whole point of this is you want to have fun playing this game. Um, one of the ways to have fun playing this game is to be running around with two guns at level two. I'm now level two. I'm going to go and pick up the first gun. Right, if you come, if you come up here, this is how close this is. You come out of Devil's Crossing, the starter area. You run up this road, find this well that's always there, and there's a house here. You go into this house. And there's a body, Francis. He topped himself and he's left his gun behind for you to pick up. It's always there. He's also left a note. Once you've read it, it won't spawn again. Right. Here's the trick. I've got one gun. I go back to the main menu. And I go back in. What this does is it resets that area. So that pistol will be there again. Let's just equip the first one. Right. So I'm still level two. Oh, here's another thing. I'll tell you what I do with this. If you... If you want to shoot, see I've got weapon attack on the left mouse button. I'll shoot and I'll move. I'll shoot and I'll move. Now later on in the game, you'll find that um, the Inquisitor skill... Right, put. The Inquisitor skill, Inquisitor seal, you stand on that. So you stand on that, you want to be stationary while you're shooting. There are also loads of other reasons why you want to be stationary while you're shooting, because later on in the game, there's lava, there's poison, there's ether which damages you, there's all sorts of stuff on the floor you don't want to run into. So if you change this to move to, and you change that to weapon attack, I'm holding the right mouse button down now, he will fire without needing the target to fire at, and he will stay in one place while he's doing it. And that's massively useful later on. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. It's just a recommendation. I'm still level two. I'm going to go and get the second gun and be wielding two guns at level two as promised. Here's the well. Here's the house with the gun in it. There's a few zombies. Out of the way, zombies. Right, search the body again. There's a second Francis's gun. I need to get out of here before I hit level 3. Let's just go back to DC so I don't get interrupted while I show you how this works. Right, so at the moment, if I try and equip that second gun, it won't let me. It says, no, you can't do it. Inquisitor. 
I've got one point in the mastery bar. There is a skill called ranged expertise. This is a ranged weapon bonus. Also enables the ability to dual wield ranged weapons. One point in that. Boom, two guns. Okay. Um, I recommend until, well, at least up to level 60, dump all your attribute points into physique. You need cunning for ranged weapons. Um, require cunning 25 that escalates massively as you level up higher level ones you're going to need I don't know five, 500 plus I think it is probably the highest uh, cunning you need but there is a there's a devotion skill hawk and the last note on that is a minus 10% cunning requirement for ranged weapons yeah get that eventually right so I got my two guns I'm laughing did I put all my points in? No, I've still got one point. So what I'd say now is once you've got one point in that, don't don't put any more in there. Raise your mastery up. What you'll find with this is um, it's it's an auto shooter build. So you you're, you're hardly using any skills apart from running around shooting things. Now if that sounds boring to you, don't do it. Do something else. But it's not boring. It's a barrel of laughs. I'm level three. Right. I'm going to do what I said. Raise the mastery. Now, I'll go up here and grab. Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to go across to Hargate's Isle and level up quickly on Slith because that's always a good idea. What we want to be doing, we want to be getting some components to drop to add to the damage the guns do. But watch this these two guns should rip through these snakes like nobody's business. Normally, coming here, it's kind of dangerous. I mean, they're level 6, but look at them go. Right, I'm almost level 4. Stamps, always search stamps. Right, there's a searing ember. I would say, whatever components... Hang on a sec, there's two. Okay, we're laughing. Right. I would say whatever components drop, so whether it's a searing ember or the cold thing or the lightning thing, it doesn't matter. I think searing ember probably is going to be slightly better because although you're working on an elemental build, the main elemental damage you're doing out of fire, cold and lightning is going to be fire. So, <laughs> all right, I've got to be level five to put them on there. Doesn't matter. My own stupid fault for not paying attention. Right. Points into physique. Right now, you've got a bursting round. This is a range technique that activates default weapon attacks. Put one point in that, the other two in the mastery. So now I've got a chance to fire out something that will explode. It won't happen very often because the percentage chance is still quite low. Right, I've picked another gun up that could be better than Francis's, but possibly not. We'll have a look. Right, how are we doing for stuff? Right, those are better. Ether, okay. Fireball, 25. Yeah, Francis is... Francis, he, This rare gun, it's got the fire damage, but it always comes with a granted skill, fireball, 8% chance on attack. So you've got an 8% chance off that gun and an 8% chance off that gun. You can see the fireball. Actually, it might only happen when you fire at an enemy. It could be a thing. Oh, that's right. Okay. So here's a, here's a good tip. See that says of scorching. That's adding fire damage, which is great. We'll have some of that. That's just a lucky drop. I mean, you might get something as good as that. You might get something better. You might get some complete garbage. This, watch how much XP I get for this. 150. Look, that's given me, what, a third, quarter, third of a level up on that. So come here and get this. This is quite. A, it's a safe. It's a safe enough place. 
what you can do is you can kite them to a door and shoot them all as they come through the door. There you go, that was bursting round. And that. Right, I'm level five now, so this is this is working out well. So leave those alone for now. Don't put points in anything else. Don't don't be what you want to do is you're gonna be putting points into these things that all trigger off on default attacks. You're gonna be getting up to here and using Inquisitor Seal, getting up to there and using Order of Censure, and you're gonna put some points into Deadly Aim. We'll put one point into that when we hit level six. You can see bursting round, it's that massive explosion that goes off every now and again. Right, what I was talking about earlier on. Okay, so I've got... It's a shame the cold one hasn't dropped. These components go on weapons. Syrian Ember goes on weapons. Crack Lodestone. That does lightning damage and it converts physical damage to lightning. It gives you a skill, which again I wouldn't use. That gives you a skill as well, which I wouldn't use. Um, you can if you want, but there's no point. So what I'm going to do is... If you have a look at this, weapon attacks on, on the right mouse button, so it shows up there. That's your left mouse button, that's your right mouse button. So if we put one of those onto that gun, watch this rocket up now. There you go, so that's gone up. Um, you, you could put the lightning one on if you wanted a bit of diversity in your damage. Actually, let's do that. It'll go up again. There you go. So that's gone up quite a bit. So I'm now, you know, if you... If you if you're fighting something that's got a little bit of resistance to fire, the lightning will hopefully compensate. Right, zip back to DC. So what, where we are now, a quick summary, we got to level level 5. I've pumped all my level up points into Physique. I've picked Inquisitor and apart from one point in ranged expertise and one point in burst and round, I've whacked all the other points into Master to get to here. Next level up, I'll put a point in that. So what we'll do now is we'll go and complete the campaign quest, the first one. What I want to do is get to get to 10, so I can show you what to do when you get your demolitionist mastery. And then once, once I've shown you how to... I mean, it's an option. It's not. I'm not telling you this is what you've got to do. This works though. I mean, you've seen how well it works. I went to that island with those overleveled, slightly higher than me dudes, completely ripped them apart. Yeah, there's some of the green stuff you don't want to stand in. Harbour Master's log. Right, we'll read this. I think it's 25 XP, might be 50. 25, yeah. It's all worth getting, but diminishing returns the higher level you are, the less benefit you're going to get from the odd law note. There's a little mini boss through here. Should be able to take him out with maybe three or four hits. Might be more. I don't know what level he's going to be when he pops out of the ground. Come on, mate. One, two, three, four, right, maybe six. They're getting in my way. Right, he's dead. But as you can see, um, there's no real risk in... Oh, there's a crack load stone again, right? And he's dropped his monster in frequent arm, which is nice. I've got a whole video about monster in frequency if you're interested. In Act One, a few more law notes in here. Actually, pass these idiots. Right. So what we'll do here: stick a point in physique. Stick a point in that and rest in there that's pretty good that will 100 percent chance of activating so as soon as you start shooting things you'll get like a 
blue target thing over your head. Or not. There it is. To say it triggers on critical attacks, I think that's what it's... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So when you when you land a critical attack, that um, that buff comes on, that temporary buff switches on. For now, just leave one point in it. and worry too much about raising any of those things. Again, this... Usually what you would do is... Is pick a... Attack skill, damage skill, and max it out as quickly as possible. Uh, you don't need to doing this. So you've got two guns, got components on them. You're doing lots of damage. As you can see, it's not burning your energy out. Again, this build, you won't... I, just, I got on a, on a limit. I don't think you'd ever have problems with energy on this. You haven't got to go worrying about spirit or putting points into energy. Right. Got a bit. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Stumpy the stump. Now it's another thing that people will tell you. They'll they'll say, "Oh, yeah, you've got to switch switch common loot off as soon as you can." Now, if it's your first character and you've got nothing in stash, you're going to want to sell as much stuff as possible so although these things don't they're not worth an awful lot it, it, some money is better than no money at the start of the game in case you want to buy things it's just a um it's a balancing act though isn't it it's too much hassle to keep going back to town selling things turn it off Right, so what I'd recommend here, go up and go up and unlock this waypoint, this rift. There you go, a bit closer. Right. And then there's a guy to rescue around here. You can rescue him and then forget about him because you can't go and talk to him and get the XP until look at that lot. If you get a burst in rain, that'll be Yeah. So you talk to him, take all the first options, right, and zip back over to the one we just unlocked. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and complete the main first quest and get our first devotion point. To do that you need an ether crystal. There's one. Right, his inventory's full. So what you can do, map back town, flog all the stuff you don't want. Flog meaning sell for all those people who aren't up with that slang. So all this stuff. I mean, glance at it. If you've only got white stuff in a slot, you might have something better. Don't sell the stuff that's better. Movement speed. Oh, yeah, I'll keep the one with the movement speed on it. Don't want that. Don't want that. Right. Spirit offensive ability calls here. Again, you make a call that's actually that's sell that. Sell that. Right. Quickly go back to where we were. So what you could do now, which is what people generally advise, if you don't want to pick this stuff up to sell it, if you turn off common you don't see it anymore. It's there. If you hold Alt down, you can see it's still there. You can pick it up if you want. This is Alt on a PC keyboard. I don't know what it would be on Xbox. So this, this stuff still drops. You're not saying you don't want it to drop. What you're saying is you don't want to see it. It's still there.
Right, level seven, I'll just sort that out before we go in. Point and physique. So for now, three points in the mastery bar. What happened, seven to go, yeah, 15, 16, 17. We'll get almost to that, or we'll get to that before we hit level 10, and then we'll grab Demolitionist with the second mastery, start putting some points into that. Right, boss fight coming up and see how good this is. Right, I should what this guy does is he's got two basic things that he does. He summons undead and he throws balls of ether that form a little puddle on the floor. So if you watch his, his actions, you can see he uses two hands to do his summoning thing and one hand to chuck his ether ball. When he chucks the ether ball, just dodge it and don't stand in the... He also hits you if you get, get close enough. Right, there's his ether attack. And there's his summon attack with two hands. So you can see the two things he does. You just dodge the ether ball and you're fine. When you kill a boss, they always, as you know, so that barrack one, they always drop one of these floaty ball things. And you break that and you get a bunch of Christmas presents. Start getting this yellow stuff, you have a look and see as though, right, okay. Um, if you're not sure whether equipping something will, see that's the same armor rate in 74. If you get this up, if you swap gear around, you can see whether it actually makes any difference to your attack damage. That puts it up a little tiny bit. So for now, yeah, same with this. See, it's swapping the gear around and it's putting the attack up. So I leave it on the higher, the higher rating. Devotion shrines down in here. Pick up the ether crystals, kill the boys behind it. Now what I do with the purifier Going to Devotions, you got one point. I want to go over here and get this one that buffs fire, add some spirit, fire damage, and that sets the ground on fire around you. Later on, I'll, I'd attach that to a demolitionist skill called Thermite Mine, but for now you can just put it on yourself. So you want a red point, and then you can start pumping points into that thing. Yeah, you get loot drop out of the shrines when you restore them. So you could go back to town now and cash that quest in, but what I'll do is just clear this area out. There's a few more ether crystals to grab too. And um, I mean, there's some basic tactics for using a ranged build. You can hang back, lead them through a doorway, shoot them as they walk through. Those boys will just hang back and do ranged attacks on you. One of the quests you get when you cash the first one in is to kill three named enemies. They're always in the same place. The first one is just around here, so you might as well get him and then go back to town. I mean, optionally, you could carry on and run up and open the next rift gate, so you've got somewhere to, to map to. Tell you what, we'll do that, because it's worth doing, and it doesn't take long. And it will help me level up, I'll be at least eight, maybe nine, after I've cashed that quest in then. So I want to show you what happens when you get to, demo, to, get to level ten. 
Right, the first named guy that you'll get to kill in a, in a quest in a minute is this bloke here. Now, the thing is, you can kill him before you get the quest. Grimdorn's really good like that. It'll, like, keep track of the fact that you've killed him. When he dies, don't stand in this group. Well, actually, this is what happens if you stand in it. Not a lot, really. It's not so good. Well... Yeah, for now, that there's not an awful lot of benefit in swapping too much gear around. Once you've got to the point where you've got coloured stuff, magic or rare, in all the slots. You don't have to, yeah, you get a little bit into micromanaging the odd point of attack, but those two things I could do with swapping out, so they actually give some benefit rather than just armour. And if you're wondering whether Purify is any good late game, I've got a couple of videos. I might, I'll, I'll tag some footage on the end of this actually, save you going and looking at a different video. Oh look, that's definitely, that will definitely increase something, or not. Hard to tell really without swapping it round, that's why you swap it round, that will make life better. Didn't put damage up, but it's got some health and defensive ability on it. So I'm only missing... I haven't got any rings yet. Level 8. So you're going to work towards that. Three points in. We go slith hunting now. If you hover over a weapon or any item, if you weapon specifically, if you hold control down, what it does is it will compare it against the weapons you've got and it will not take the components into consideration, so it will remove them out of the damage equation. So you can see the, the difference that changes and it greys out the components. That's just holding control down. Don't know what that is on Xbox, you might not even have that option. I'll shut up and do what I said I was going to do. We'll get around to the White Mire Rift, free that up. There's a little fight on this one. It's not just a case of walking up to it, you've got to fight the enemies that come out of it. Three waves. Three waves of enemies. Standard tactic, run up, run away, start shooting. So what I'm doing there, see the second wave won't spawn until I'm close to that. If you go and stand in the middle of that, they'll just constantly keep dropping on you and you'll take damage. 
if you if you're ranged, even if you haven't got a lot of defence and your armor's a bit rubbish, if you if you can get things to come towards you like this, shambling towards you, you mostly wear them out before they get there. Sometimes they'll reach you. Just run a bit further away. And if you've got some kind of thing on, like, I haven't got a chilled, yeah, that. See, if you, don't know where I was going with that. That's another option anyway, you can use that instead of the fire one. And that's it. When you clear all three waves, this thing all... Oh, he's there. Wasn't doing a lot. So that you can use that rift now. Right. So I'll go back to town and cash a quest in. Might get close to level 10. It would be just over level 9, but we'll see. Right. To talk to Bourbon. The dead a creature. We need some time. There's a whole bunch of stuff to do now. We'll do it in a kind of a clockwise order. Talk to this chap in here and you'll get an extra Welcome skill point. He wants ether crystals. Ah, very good. One I'm skill sure point. I have to say, I do feel a little... There it is. And we're going to talk to Barnabas. We've only got three scrap. He wants five, so I'll have to go and get some more. And this guy gives us the quest to kill three named bad guys. We've already killed one of them. So as soon as this quest pops up, here it is something for nothing. Slay Pharos the Rotted. We've already done that. So, like I said, you kill him, it already logs it that you've killed him. This bloke lets you into the prison, gives you a bit of XP. Now, the, remember the chap we, when we went up to, the portal, which is about there, and we came back down to this house, rescued the guy, it's this one. So that's when we rescued, level nine. We just grabbed the quest off Sybil. Go up here and talk to the spirit guide. Spirit guide is the NPC that lets you reset skill points and devotion points. Greetings, child. You get some XP for talking to us. If you talk to her, there's a screen. You click on something, it will reset the skill point. You can undo it and you get your money back. Devotions work the same way, but you need an ether crystal and some money to undo stuff. Same thing. You can click on it and then undo and it will put it back doesn't cost you anything to experiment safe journey, safe journey. thank you i'll do my best it's everything in here i don't think this guy sells scrap we'll see what's left of what wears. but he does so there's one it costs 800 um i've got four now because i got one in a quest quest reward and there's one for sale so if i buy that I've now got Barnabas's scrap. Was it worth it? Eight hundred for a bit of scrap. I got three hundred back, so it cost me five hundred. So not really. What this gives you is Barnabas now gives you a quest to go down here. I'm not going to do that just yet. Actually, yeah, I am. This is a quick way to get to level ten. Right. So we can put a point into chilling rounds now. This has got a... When this activates, you will freeze the target. This is great for slowing them down when they're walking towards you. I'm hoping we can see this happen. 
they go blue for less than a second and they stop moving, but... Yeah, it happened to him, but he died before it was really obvious what was going on. If you like the colours, if you like all the different effects that are going on with these shots, it only gets better and better and better the further you progress and the more devotions you attach to your attack skill. Yeah, look at that lot go. That was excellent. The other thing about ranged, you could shoot these spiders. They don't all jump on you when you go down there because they're dead. Bit of a hidden area. Some stuff in it. Always one of these big chests the first time you go in here. Any of that stuff in useful? Oh, see. Don't be tempted. Stick with the pistols. Don't be don't be tempted to go with that. Yeah, we'll have some of that. Still not got any decent gloves, have I? No. Right, let's get to level 10. I know that's what you want to see. What's he going to do when he gets to level 10? Finally got a decent ring. Oh, and it's giving some flat lightning damage and it's up in attack speed. At this point in the game, that's brilliant. I really don't like the noises those spiders make, it's disgusting. If you got the chance, let them come to you. Wait by a doorway, let them run through it. Let them all get queued up and then melt them. This is always fun, you don't know when you go through here, you don't know what the spawn's going to be like, but either way. If you don't like the damage you're taking, you get these scavenged platings, lots of these drop, plus 15 armour. So at this stage in the game, say you've got, that was decent, we'll keep that. So that's got 18 armour. So plus 15 is going to make a bit of a difference, isn't it? You can just stick that on there. What I say is, don't worry about saving components too much at the start of the game. Just use them, get the benefit. Finally, finally got some decent gloves. There you go. 
So I've got, so I've, apart from I haven't got a medal, I think the lowest level medal that will drop, I think it's 14. I haven't got a replacement amulet yet, have I? Don't think I've got a replacement amulet yet, and I need another ring. Medal, amulet, another ring. Hopefully, Villoth will drop a ring. It, will do, it, will, it doesn't really help this build, but it looks nice, so I'll wear it. Right, here we go. So we got a choke point. You don't have to run away. I mean, you can stand there and take a bit of damage. You're not going to get killed, but um, running away is always a good plan. Can I reach these idiots? Not yet. Tried. Failed. Look at that go. <laughs> Never gets old. That's not bad. What I was saying about using components, uh, there's a caveat on that. Some of the components are rarer than others, and some of them are used for specific things, like restoring shrines. Now, I know that there's a, a shrine later on in the game, not that much later on, that will need a frozen heart to restore it. So if I only had one of those, I wouldn't use it. Or if I did use it, I'd be prepared to get it back. Um, so yeah, if, I think if you've got multiples, like if you've got five, yeah, you can use one. If you've got two, use one. If you've only got one, hang on to it. Don't use it until you get another one. Right. What we do now, when you get to level 10 and you get to skills, it will say which one do you want to use next. Demolitionist. So first thing we wanted to grab is Fire Strike. Fire Strike is a default attack replacer. So put one point into Demolitionist and two points in Fire Strike, why not? We want to get Flame Touched, which is a toggle skill soon, but for now, so what you do is, instead of having a default attack, Fire Strike, make sure you don't click Fire Blast. That's off the, um, the component, that's not it. Fire Strike is the thing you want. And then what you'll see is instead of weapon attack, that now says fire strike. And if you look at that, fire strike's doing pierce, fire, lightning, vitality. It's doing all sorts. You can see the, the piercing damage that is being included in fire strike is coming from the Inquisitor skill ranged expertise. Anyway, fire strike. So it's a damage replacer. A, a default attack replacer, rather. And what you'll see is you'll see it's always look at that. Though. That's a beautiful thing. So you get more weapon damage than the weapon on its own. And you get the additional fire strike stuff. And all of a sudden things are just melting. Do Viloth, he's up there. I'll do Viloth, I'll get the second shrine and then I'll quit out of this. You can see you can see what I'm doing with this character. I'll give you a quick idea of what, what I'm doing with the demolitionist skills. And then I'll tag on a little bit of footage of a level 100 purifier doing its thing. So you can see how viable it is towards the end of the game.
inventory is full. Right, he's down, boss is down, we'll go and get the shrine that's up here. Just needs another ether crystal. Got plenty of them. There's a replacement amulet. So if I move, take that out. If you haven't got anything in a slot, and you pick something up that you can equip in that slot, it'll automatically put it in there. It's given me plus 9% cunning, which is always good. Offensive ability and a bit of pierce resistance. I can argue with that. Do I want that? Not really. My inventory is full. One of the bonuses of this quest, if you're thinking you're having fun juggling your inventory around, once you complete this quest, you'll get another inventory bag. So this slot over here will become another inventory bag. There you go, look. inventory bag. Expands the size of your inventory, plus you get some reputation. So you got this now, so you can pick some more stuff up, and you'll get another four of these through the course of the game. From quest rewards. Right, we'll go and talk to Bourbon, because once you've done all that stuff, most of the scrap stuff... One of my scouts came back with, you follow the rope. That's epic. I'm sure you'd agree. So Inquisitor, so what are you going to end up with? It? You'll have points in that, points in that, points in that, and points in that eventually. Word of Renewal, you can use that as a heal. But, you know, um, don't focus on it immediately. You don't need to. You're going to max the mastery out and put points in Aura of Censure, which is great for fire damage and you're going to put points into Inquisitor Seal and that, I wouldn't bother with that node because that slows your attack speed down, nobody needs that, just those two, so that's pretty much it on there. Demolitionist, kind of max this out, just be careful with point allocation, it's going to get a bit going to get a bit scarce towards the end of the game, you're going to use Flame Touched, you're going to use Blast Shield, it's a safety harness for taking massive damage, you're going to use Vindictive Flame and that. Um, and then it's all really... I mean, I, I use Thermite Mine. And there's you can use Flashbang. Flashbang is a really good skill. Thermite Mine is my generally where I'd go with it. Use that. Um, all the other stuff. All the other stuff that are like caster skills. Blacktail, Blackwater, co Blacktail, <laughs> Blackwater Cocktail. That. This. Mortars. Um... It's, it's a different thing. If you're going auto attack pistol build, you don't need any of that stuff. What I'll do though, I'll, I'll put, the, I'll put a, a Grim Tools link in for the level 100 so you can see where it ended up. Not this one, I mean a previous one. I mean this is what I'm doing just now. But that's that's how that's how to play a fun sort of semi-high-ish, almost immediately high DPS build with two guns. You get two guns from level 2. Just a quick bit of footage here on a level 100 purifier so you can see where this build can possibly end up
what the skills look like. Maxed out fire strike. That's almost maxed out. Thermite mine. A few points in those. Damage skills that trigger devotions. That one does. It's the meteor shower one. Elemental storm. There's aura of censure. There's the seal, and there's that. It's pretty much what I was talking about. Devotion is one way of doing this. That's always a great one for a fire build. That's your resistance reduction. Minus 23% on fire strike. Everything you shoot loses its re loses a percentage of its fire, fire resistance. Ghoul's a good one for your health. There's Elemental Storm. Some people don't like this one. I think it's pretty. And that's it really, if you, if you want to do a gun build, that's a good way to start. And in the hour or so it took you to get to level 10, I don't know how long that took, you'll know whether or not you liked it. And if you, if you don't like it, if you don't like standing there shooting things, shelve this character and go and play something else. And see, see if you like that. We could always come back to it. And if you fall in love with the whole shooting things in the face, then play this one and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon in the next one.